Real talk, folks, I can't think of another album in 2020 that so perfectly fits the term mixed bag more than Long Day Good Night from Fate's Warning. I mean, holy hell, if we were to look up mixed bag in the dictionary, I am certain we'd see a picture of this album. <laughs> This is the 13th studio album from Fate's Warning, a long-running American progressive metal band often cited as pioneers of the genre alongside Dream Theater and Queensryche. With their third and fourth studio albums, Awaken the Guardian and No Exit respectively, often looked upon as some of the best progressive metal of all time. Now truthfully, their modern output has been consistently pretty hit and miss for me. While I did enjoy their 2013 album Darkness in a Different Light, I can very honestly say I don't remember a single moment of their 2016 record Theories of Flight. With that aside though, I still went into this album pretty optimistic, not just because of the band's reputation, but because of everything I had heard about the album from both Metal Blade Records and a variety of different press releases, and from bassist Joey Vera himself in an interview I conducted here on the Metal Meltdown back in September. We heard that the band would be working closely with touring guitarist Michael Abdow, members of Porcupine Tree and Pineapple Thief. We had heard that the band would be working with string quartets and that this would literally be the band's biggest album with a massive runtime of 77 minutes. And on my very first playthrough of this album, I did initially feel as if my optimism and curiosity was being rewarded quite heavily. As the first three tracks, Destination Onward, Shuttered World, and Alone We Walk, are all pretty energetic and entertaining little prog metal jams with some solid vocal performances, some great hefty atmospheric guitar riffs and passages and sonic textures, and lyrics that, intentionally or not, do seem to tap into the loneliness and mental anguish that we have all felt during quarantine, during the insanity of 2020. But as time went on and I began to sink my teeth further into this initially delicious little prog metal steak, I found that some bites and some tracks entirely left a bit of a sour and bitter taste in my mouth. As the album gradually lost its edge, as the album gradually settled into formulas and into predictable patterns, and even made some genuinely kind of questionable decisions. Take for instance the track Begin Again, which is the absolute kind of hokey butt rock tripe I would have expected to hear on the Daredevil soundtrack back in the day. Or the track When Snow Falls, which goes for a much softer, minimalistic presentation, which in theory I kind of appreciate, but in execution I found to be genuinely pretty boring. Although I have to say, the worst offender here, and in turn the worst track on the album, would probably be Liar. Thanks to its unnecessarily sleazy, almost deep-fried southern rock guitar licks, and an incredibly clumsy transition into the main chorus. Frankly, even some of the album's strongest tracks have quite a few issues. Take, for instance, the track The Way Home, which initially starts off on a very cheesy note, with a very slow, sensual, almost power ballad-esque passage and segment that feels like the kind of thing I would hear at somebody's wedding. Now, to its credit, it does recover pretty quickly with some very dense and angular and mathematical riffing, the kind of stuff I would hear from, like, Tool or maybe even Porcupine Tree. But that sour, awkward, and even jarring contrast remains nonetheless, and as a result, I did find myself skipping the first few minutes of The Way Home on my second listen of this album. Now, peppered in between all of this, there are still some legitimately great things happening on this album. Take, for instance, the track Longest Shadow of the Day, an 11-minute jazz and alt-metal-infused sonic monster with incredible musicianship and perhaps some of the band's best song craft in a long time. Or the track Under the Sun, a very laid-back and mellow acoustic rock number that utilizes string instruments and some psychedelic undertones. And it especially helps that the performances and the production value, even in the weakest written tracks, are consistently fantastic. Everything feels so genuine, so authentic, so intimate even, not just because of the very emotive and vulnerable performances, but also because of a sound mix that allows the band to scuff their feet a little bit when need be. 
Like the guitars, for instance, are a little dirtier, a little muddier here. There's a little bit more static and feedback being kicked up, and I actually think that that benefits the album big time. It helps in creating a more natural kind of atmosphere, and in turn, makes the album feel more human. I think I'd probably give this album a 2.5 out of 5. I think for everything that Fate's Warning gets right on this album, they get another thing wrong. For every song I really like, there's another song I don't like. For every song I love, there's a song I just want to skip over and forget entirely. And for every decision made in how to present this album that I like, such as the sound mix, the production value, the atmosphere, there's another decision made in how to present this album that I don't like, such as the inherently cluttered, clumsy, and bloated runtime. Like, there is no need whatsoever for this album to be 77 minutes long, especially not when you've got a pretty strong handful of tracks that just aren't up to par. Like, seriously, folks, you could trim 25 minutes worth of unnecessary fat off of this album entirely and lose nothing. I would definitely recommend that you check out a few of the tracks here, like Longest Shadow of the Day, A Lonely Walk, and Scars, which we haven't mentioned until now, come to think of it, but it's got one of the best fucking riffs on the entire album. But I wouldn't recommend listening to the full album itself unless you are a very patient and very die-hard Fate's Warning fanboy. One who has been riding with the band for years now and is more familiar and accustomed to their more modern output. So once again, folks, 2.5 to 5, perhaps the most perfect example of a mixed bag I could possibly find in 2020. I would definitely prefer something a lot more fluid and consistent in the future, but as it stands, it's not a total waste of time. In fact, all things considered, it's pretty okay. And that is it! For the Metal Meltdown, I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be, so what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown. E-fucking-immediately, and you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.